All right, folks, uh, this is Brian again, uh, bringing in a, a Titan 440 impact. Customer said that the uh, prime valve is leaking. Um, so we're going to take a look at the prime valve today to see what the issue is. More than likely, the uh, seals in the uh, prime valve are bad, um, which occurs. There's not a whole lot you can do to prevent that. I guess the best way to prevent it is don't use the prime valve. Prime valve is right here. As you can see, it's actually got water leaking from the unit. You also notice some white paint here. Now, this is usually a telltale sign that the piston and packings, the upper piston and packings are leaking. Don't know if that's the case. It could also be that paint had gotten splashed on it at some point and just run down. Uh, it's nice and crispy, so it's been there for a bit. So when we test all of this, we'll be able to tell if that's an issue as well. Uh, before we get started... Uh, we'll talk about a little bit, a little bit about safety here. Uh, wear safety glasses. Uh, I keep mine on my head. Just force of habit. I like my eyes. I was born with a pair. I'd like to leave here with a pair. Uh, second thing is uh, your pressure. You want to make sure that the pressure is off of this machine prior to uh, doing anything to it. Now, when the machine came in, the hose wasn't on it. I use my hose with my gun and my pressure gauge to ensure that this is my gun and my pressure gauge. I don't trust anybody else's gun and hoses. I don't know what you do with them, so I use mine, mine only. And I still don't trust it 100%. But, um, so the hose was off of it, so I'm 99.9% .9 sure there's no pressure on it. Uh, we'll turn the prime valve down. I don't know if you can see the water leaking here or not. Um, let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. Yeah, you can see the zoom, uh, the, with the zoom that the uh, water is leaking uh, out of the bottom of the uh, prime valve here. So I'm going to go ahead and, because sometimes it's not obvious like this, sometimes it'll leak a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I've already got a bucket of water over here and my pickup hose. Now, just so you're aware, this is a live working shop. Uh, so at any time I could get interrupted and have to stop the video. I used to try to maintain the video all the way through so that you could see uh, basically live, if you will, how long it takes to do this and what it takes and, and is without trying to edit and make things better, uh, make me look better. So there may be times that I have to pause the video because I have to answer a phone or a customer comes in and needs something to, uh, for me to take a look at something when they come in. So customer comes first. So if there's a pause, that's what it is. So I've got a bucket of water over here. We're gonna turn the machine on and we're gonna let it build, build pressure or prime out the air. Then we're gonna flip the prime valve over and see what we got. Normal prime valve won't leak here and the machine will run and stop when it maintain, uh, builds to the proper pressure. So we're gonna see what we got. see a little bit of water leaking now uh, but you could really see it when it was in the prime position you see it flooding out now so we definitely got an issue with the prime valve so I got it off we're gonna unplug it so we don't accidentally turn something on that we don't want to turn on and uh, very few very few tools are needed for this if you do not have these tools right here then you don't need to be taking any machine apart in the first place uh, you need a hammer, a uh, punch with a skinny end that'll fit inside of the uh, locking pin here, 13 16 wrench, and a pair of pliers. And if this is all covered in paint, take your hammer and just kind of chip out away at the paint till you can see right here in the top. You can see right there is the pin. All right. So with that pin, you're just going to take your hammer, and you're going to knock that pin out through the bottom. And it doesn't take a lot of effort to do it. The pin won't typically fall right out. So take a pair of pliers or vice grips or something and tap it out. Pull your cap off. Pull your collar off. Now sometimes, you see this just fell right out. And that goes in here, and it locks into here to keep this from spinning. Sometimes when you take it off, this will stay in here. If that happens, 
one of two things. Now, if you get a Titan rebuilt, it'll come with all new uh, uh, collar and, and uh, handle. If that does stick in there, don't don't freak out about it. Now, if it's flush in there, you want to get it out. But if it's sticking in there and still protruding on your new one, or you can use your old one, just pull the new one out and stick it over, and, and it'll go right in there. Or uh, just use your old one. It's not a big deal. Now we're going to take our wrench. Loosen the prime valve up and remove it. Sorry about the shaky camera. prime valve. Now, I said the seals could be worn. These are not necessarily the seals I'm talking about. This rod in here, there's a set of seals on that. You have a carbide seat and then you have a carbide ball right here on the end that closes the valve off. And what happens when you turn the prime valve, it actually pulls this rod back, opens up the hole, your paint comes out through these holes and out through your prime hose. Okay, When this is back in place, then it directs it to the other end of the block. Um, so the carbide seat on the inside, all of that could be worn down and it's causing a leak or the seals on the end of the rod can be worn down. I have seen sometimes where it leaks like this, but it's because this right here, this nut that you see, or this hex head here, has slowly over time unscrewed. And if you tighten it up, it eliminates the problem. But usually, uh, th that's not the case. So you'll, you'll pull this off. That's no good at that point. And uh, you'll look inside of your hole here. On the inside, you should see, I don't know if you'll be able to see it with this or not, but inside of that hole, you, there's a hole at the very back end. It's a very small circular hole. Now, take a look at it to make sure that the hole is circular. If it's oblong, shaped like an egg, then you have an issue with pressure cutting in here and you actually need to replace the block because it's going to continue to get worse. And when it does, you have an issue of uh, no prime valve is going to correct the problem. Now, there's a bronze ring right here. You want to get that out. And it can be a pain sometimes because if they've been in there a while, they don't like to come out. Let me get the screwdriver here. When you do this, be careful because this is aluminum. And if you damage those threads, then you're going to be replacing a block. So you pull the... Uh, the bronze ring out. Here's your new one. It comes with everything you need to uh, replace it. Part number 700-258 by Titan. There's some aftermarket ones out there. Uh, be careful where you buy them at. Bedford is usually pretty good stuff. I don't like using any Chinese made parts because you're dealing with 3,300 pounds of pressure here, and I like my hands and my eyes. I don't want to have a catastrophic failure because I decided to try to save $20 on a part. Get good quality parts. So you'll take your little prime valve out. Here's your bronze ring. Bronze ring just fits right there like that. That's all. You take your new prime valve. Put it in and screw it in. Now sometimes, uh, depending on where you get it at, the prime valve will have uh, like a thread lock material, a thread sealant. Use it if you want. Uh, Titan doesn't come with it. I know Graco's does. And we'll tighten this up. We want it really good and tight. Now, 
there's a hole right here. Look in the old one. You can see that hole. All right, so you want that hole so it's vertical. So you take your old pin, stick it in the hole, turn it till it's vertical. So now you see it's vertical. You don't want it back here. You want it straight up and down. Now your new pin and your old pin, it'll be hard to see, but there's a ridge right along this end. This end doesn't have it. The ridge is to help lock it in place so it don't fall out. So when you put the new pin in, put the ridge up top, smooth in goes in first. If you try to go the other way, it can be a little bit difficult uh, and damage it. So you put your collar on and you see the, the pin that we were talking about here goes right in the hole so that it doesn't spin. Your new uh, handle, you see the hole, we'll just put it in like so. Slide the pin into the hole, gently tap till you find the alignment. Tap it all the way down. Now don't go crazy hitting it because if you hit it too hard, you'll crack this. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Now we're going to test it again. We're going to turn it down to prime. Oh, well, yeah, we're going to plug it in. Sorry about that. Turn it on. No leak. So we're good on that. So we'll easily open this up. You see a leak right here. I got a bad fitting on the machine here, so we're going to replace that fitting as well. But I'm going to dump the pressure off real easy. Pressure's off. Uh, to replace the fitting here, it's quarter by quarter nipple. Uh, you'll unscrew your hose, unscrew this, screw the new one in good and tight. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I didn't see any leakage through here, so I don't believe we're leaking. This could be something old where it's been replaced here, but uh, the residue is left behind. Or it could be, like I said earlier, where it had splashed up onto the unit. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. It's real simple. Uh, this can save you a little time uh, on the job. Uh, it can save you some money.